we present a laparoscopic revision from sleeve gastrectomy to roux y gastric bypass for persistent sleeve stenosis. A 33-year-old male was transferred to our hospital five weeks after a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy complicated by a stapoline hematoma. He was intolerant to oral intake and secretion since surgery and had undergone unsuccessful endoscopic dilatation twice. He had a 63-pound weight loss and had multiple admissions for dehydration. An upper GI contrast study demonstrated a stenosis just distal to the GE junction with minimal passage of contrast. Endoscopy confirmed the stenosis, which was traversed, with gentle pressure while twisting the scope to the right. The remaining sleeve was otherwise patent down to the pylorus. A 12.5 cm by 23 mm covered stent was placed with the paper clip marking the stenosis. Almost immediately, the stent was displaced upward into the esophagus. After nutritional optimization, the patient was taken to the operating room to undergo exploration in anticipation of revision to a gastric bypass. Adhesions between the liver and stomach were lysed and a nathison retractor placed. The new greater curvature was identified and omental adhesions lysed. Along the greater curve, a densely scarred, indurated area was carefully investigated. Although at first we thought we had entered into the sleeve, upon further investigation it was found to be an old hematoma cavity. This was evacuated. An extensive dissection was then performed in order to identify and completely mobilize the sleeve from the pylorus up to the hiatus. We ensured that all adhesions were completely lysed that might have caused kinking or twisting of the sleeve, resulting in the stenosis. Here the sleeve has been completely mobilized. Although not shown, endoscopy was performed with the scope passing easily from the gastroesophageal junction down to the pylorus. Due to his previously failed dilatations, an intraoperative fluoroscopy was performed with patient in steep reverse Trendelenburg. 10 millimeter clips demonstrate the area of stenosis without passage of contrast. The decision was made to revise the patient to a gastric bypass. A paragastric dissection was performed. and the sleeve divided above the area of stenosis. The pouch was verified and quickly tested for a leak. The jeju jejunostomy was created 40 centimeters from the ligament of trites, creating a rule limb 100 centimeters in length. After completion of the jeju jejunostomy and closure of the mesenteric defect, we proceeded with creation of the gastro jejunostomy. Upon further evaluation of the staple line, staples were noted to be loose and opening. Any loose staples were removed, and the entire staple line was incorporated into our first layer of a two layer hand sewn gastro jejunostomy.
ensuring minimal tension on the rule lamp, a gastrostomy and enterostomy were created. The remainder of the gastrojejunostomy was then performed. An endoscopic leak test was performed at the end of the case, with the endoscope easily passing into the rule limb without any evidence of a leak. The anatomic orientation of the rule limb was assured, and a JP drain was placed at the end of the case. A contrast swallow was performed on postoperative day one without evidence of a leak and with emptying into the rule limb. The patient was started on a liquid diet and discharged on postoperative day 4. No complication was noted on follow-up, and over time the patient was advanced to a regular diet.